Hello there and welcome to Diplomatic Affairs TV show here on Pan-African Television. This is the only show that gives you a window to international relations and diplomacy. We're live across 46 African countries and other parts of Europe. We're live on Facebook and on YouTube at Pan-African Television. My name is Ivan Bans Aban. Well, today I will be the host of uh, today's edition of Diplomatic Affairs TV show. And I'll quickly run you through the topics that we have tabled for our conversation. So first of all, we're going to be dealing with Ghana and Kenya elevating ties to a binational uh, commission. We're also, we're also going to be looking at Ukraine expand diplomatic footprints in Africa with new embassy in Ghana. And most importantly, we'll also talk about Jaru breaking ground for construction of classroom blocks in Nwaso. And largely, we're going to be talking about a truly momentous occasion, the first ever diplomatic honors event to be held in Ghana. Well, so I'll go for this quick commercial break. Once I'm back, I will introduce my guests to you and also we'll delve or let us still explore the significance of all these topics that we've tabled. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Right, many thanks for still staying with us. This is Diplomatic Affairs TV show here on Pan-African Television. We are live across 46 African countries and other parts of Europe. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube at Pan-African Television. Well, so I'll quickly introduce my guests. Well, today I have on the, st the studios with me, Harriet Nate, host of Diplomatic Affairs TV show, and of course, the CEO and founder of the Diplomatic Honors event. How are you doing, Harriet? I'm good, Ivan. Great. How does, it, how does it feel to be on this side of the show? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was just about to say, it's good to have you on the show. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, had to, right, right. <laughs> had to just, you know, tell myself that, wait, you are the guest, you are the guest of the, of the show, show today. today. So, right. yeah, so you are in charge. You are largely in charge, you know, take control. Right. The show is yours. Right. We are just here to help you run your show. Right, yourself, right. Yes. And of course, I have with me Edwin Ota, who is also the sponsorship lead for the Diplomatic Honors event. Edwin, good, um, well, so good afternoon to you. How are you doing? Yeah, good to see you. Mm. Thank you for having me. It's a right. pleasure. Great, great. So quickly, let's start with the conversation. Let's deal with Ghana, Kenya, elevating ties to binational commission. And permit me to just read excerpts of it so that our viewers can appreciate the conversation. Now, it says Ghana and Kenya have agreed to strengthen and expand the scope of their 61 years of old bilateral relations in order to unmark more social economic benefits for the citizens of both countries it goes ahead to say that in view of this the paramount joint commission for cooperation that is the pjcc um, that governs economic growth and technical cooperation between the two countries as to elevate into by national commission unlike the pjcc which is co-chaired by the Foreign Affairs Minister, the new commission would be headed by the two presidents, that's Kenya and Ghana, to deliberate and implement new uh, mutual beneficial program. The European Union has 27 member countries. 75% of the collective GDP of the European Union is generated by intra-European trade. 75%. The 54 members of the African Union, 14% of their collective GDP is generated by intra-African trade. And in those two statistics, in my view, tell the full story of why Europe is where it is and why we are where we are. So what is being done in this room today is absolutely critical for the future of our continent and the future prosperity of our people. And it underlines one very important fact. Politicians, ministers, presidents are always in the news. And the reason is obvious. But at the end of the day, the people who will drive the growth and development of this continent are the people in this room, the business people who are in this room. It's your ability to seize the opportunities 
that will determine whether or not we go forward. And that will determine whether or not the eradication of poverty in our generation is going to be possible in Africa. We all know that Africa is home to 60% of the world's renewable energy resources. 30% of the world's mineral resources. 65% of the world's arable, uncultivated agricultural land. And by 2050, will be home to the largest market of close to two and a half billion people who will be living in this continent. If there is any serious business person or investor or entrepreneur that is thinking about the future and they are not thinking about Kenya, Ghana, and Africa, then there is something wrong with their future. So this is the situation now, this is the conversation now. I'll start off with you, Harriet. What do you make of this? Um, Ivan, thank you very much. L let me just go to the fact that um, mm -hmm. I am excited about this development. Oh. The reason for my excitement is um, very simple, especially when it comes to African diplomacy. One of the things that we have deliberately done on diplomatic affairs is to push the agenda for African diplomacy. What do I mean by pushing the agenda for African diplomacy? To ensure that we put a spotlight on Africans dealing with each other. Yeah. So we start from home, we look at the sub-region, and then we look at the continent. It is essential if Africa um, is going to be prosperous, is, uh, if Africa is going to attain the kind of development that we want to see the continent um, attain at the end of the day for the continent itself and the people, it is essential that we are deliberate or we are very intentional when it comes to some of the policies we introduce on the continent. And having dealt with the Kenyan High Commission here in Accra also, we've had the privilege of um, knowing what is really happening behind you know, closed right. doors when right. it comes to right. um, pushing bilateral relations between these two countries, that is Ghana and Kenya, or Kenya and Ghana. The Kenyan High Commissioner to Ghana, um, His Excellency Eli, Eliphaz Barin, is a very good friend of ours, um, and he's been on the show a couple of times. And so we, we love the idea um, when we see at least representatives of our countries, you know, within the continent and um, spearheading initiatives like this one, you know, and um, it feels good, especially with the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area. Also, right. it is important that we push this with um, other initiatives so we can achieve the after that we all want. Um, Kenya and um, Ghana mm -hmm. have been doing a lot together True. when it comes to True. economic you know, activities right. or economic um, initiatives. Um, I think um, cocoa powder yeah. and uh, mushroom. Yeah. So there are I've a lot of, yes, well. exactly. Especially with AFTA, yeah. you know, when yeah. they launched the yeah. first trade yeah. under the African yeah. continental free trade yeah. area. So it's, it's, it's very encouraging. And I think we want to see more of these initiatives, more of such um, implementations, um, which means that we are very intentional about what we want to do with our content. Um, this was a moment of um, hope when I sat in the room. I was there when the Kenyan um, um, president, um, William Ruto, His right. Excellency William Ruto, visited Ghana together with our president, Danado Danko Ekufuado, and the um, other you know, executive government officials pushing this agenda. So the excitement is good, and I'm happy that we are talking about it because Africans would only appreciate what we are doing for each other when we throw more light on what we are doing. Yeah. We may not have the money to exactly. give to each exactly. other. I always say, I'm giving you a grant of this amount, you know, and all of that. But the little we can start with is by introducing um, programs that would bring all of us together, people to people's relations, you know, is very essential when it comes to building um, prosperity or unlocking prosperity for yeah. the people on the continent. If I don't know you, I cannot do business with you. That's true. You know, but once we build trust, confidence, and we feel like we leverage the similarities, we can be able to 
do business with each other, explore other new avenues and, you know, push for what we want. And intra-African trading mm -hmm. right now is key when it comes to the existence of the African continental free trade area. So I am super excited as um, an international relations um, journalist. Um, I am super excited about this move. And I want to see more of African countries also following the footsteps of Kenya. And I know there's a lot happening when it comes to South Africa and Ghana, when it comes to Rwanda and Ghana, you know. So we need to see more of such moves so the young ones can begin to appreciate and explore the opportunities um, in all sectors, in the beauty space, fashion space, and not just the serious affairs all the time. I think we should also leverage mm. soft power approach to yeah. getting yeah. businesses done, mm. you know, within the continent. And music is is, is great, you yeah. know. The conversations I know have started and um, they are being spearheaded by some individuals. Um, and so I want to see us, you know, pay attention to all these things because mm. there's nothing like this is small. You know, in the grand scheme of things, these things go a long way. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let me come to you. I mean, clearly Harit has espoused you know this you know this very topic to, to the max but obviously africans dealing with each other to explore socio-economic growth your own estimation this is progressive enough well i think it's a natural progression of uh relationship with kenya uh kwame kuma was very heavily involved in, in exactly. kenya's independence and anti-colonial struggle uh, i believe he and jomo kenyatta were one of the pioneers of the organization of african unity and in his own, in Kwame Krumah's own words, Ghana's independence is meaningless without the independence of the other the African, African states. Yes, exactly. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, we know that Kenya has certain comparative advantages when it comes to tourism. I mean, the big five, uh, you know, the lion, the cheetah, those kind of animals, we don't necessarily have them in our ecosystem. So we can't compete with Kenya mm. when it comes to wildlife tourism. But at the same time, Ghana also has a different tourist value proposition that still ensures that we are competitive in the continent. And I think together, Ghana and Kenya are really politically united to bring both the West African mm. and the East African regions together. And so, interestingly, you know, the Kenya Foreign Service mm -hmm. policy was copied from the Ghana Foreign Service policy. Yeah. So it was Ghanaian diplomats that were actually sent to Kenya to help set up their foreign affairs ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, you know, many years down the line, Kenya is also evolving, and maturing as an independent and democratic state. And, you know, it's important that that growth and maturity is done alongside the, the founding parties or the mm -hmm. founding partners that help them to get to where they are. So I think it's a very welcome, uh, uh, you know, development. And I'm excited to see how, in terms of trade, we can both take advantage of our comparative advantages and, you know, make sure that we are not, our growth is not, um, you know, to compete with one another. Mm -hmm but to complement mm -hmm. what each, each of us have to offer the, the continent and the world at large. That's good, right. So let's quickly also jump to our next uh, topic for conversation, which obviously deals with Ukraine. And it says Ukraine expands diplomatic footprint in Africa with new embassy in Ghana. Right. And allow me to just read excerpts <coughs> of it. I think this will be of uh, interest to all of us. It says that uh, Ukraine Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba announced on Wednesday the commencement of operation at the country's embassy in Ghana, making a significant step and efforts to broaden its <laughs> diplomatic presence in Africa. Um, of course, in the African continent. Now, in a statement released by the Ukrainian foreign minister, revealed that the initiative to establish new embassy in Africa was set in motion. Before the Russian full-scale military aggression in February 2022, our trade volume with Ghana reached more than 300 million US dollars. Nevertheless, there is still significant untapped potential for its further expansion and diversification. In this regard, we look forward to seizing every opportunity that the African Continental Free Trade Agreement can provide for expanding of trade and economic cooperation between Ukraine and African states, including Ghana. Ukraine invi invites its Ghanaian partners to embark on finding as many points of contact as possible, 
and we would like to see a mutual rapprochement towards each other. We witness the desire of Ghanaian students to continue their study at Ukrainian universities. We also commend the interest of Ghanaian entrepreneurs in increasing the volume of interstate trade. Our manufacturers and exporters could offer Ghana high quality goods and services at many competitive costs. It should be noted that Ukraine has made a great deal of work over the past few years to prepare for the opening of the land market. Several important draft laws have been adopted. Digital technologies such as electronic land or e-land registries and electronic services play a Ladies and gentlemen, trade relations between our two countries have been rejuvenated particularly with a visit of a Ukrainian trade delegation in April 20, 2018. Areas of discussion included agriculture, transportation, industrial equipment, telecommunications, paving the way for enhanced economic collaboration. It is worth noting that economic and trade relations between Ghana and Ukraine have shown promising signs, with Ghana exporting significant commodities such as manganese, aluminum ore, and cocoa powder to Ukraine. Conversely, Ukraine has supplied Ghana with hot rolled iron bars, raw iron bars, and cold rolled iron. These exchanges have laid the foundation for deeper economic cooperation between our two countries. So right. here we are now. One would say that this is the time the Ukrainian have found to establish its footprint in Africa. I mean, I, I, I can be wrong. Harris, what, what do you make of this? Well, I, Ivan, it, 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 is, it isn't surprising to see Ukraine stretching its um, you know, presence um, to this part of the world. Um, before, we didn't see much, much activity right. or interest from the um, East European country right. until recently when we realized that um, they are beginning to show a lot of interest. Right. But then again, before we even go into Ukraine, I right. would say it is not just Ukraine um, as a country which has started showing okay. a lot of interest in Africa. Right. Um, and I remember very well most of the time when we have these high-level visits in the country and you listen to some of the remarks made by these um, you know, chief diplomats who come into our country. They say there is one particular phrase that runs through almost all their speeches and that is if you ignore Africa, you ignore Africa at your own peril right. because right. the future is Africa. Africa. The future <coughs> is Africa, which is why it is essential that we realize what we can <coughs> offer mm -hmm. and how we can begin to benefit that you know within the continent then we also realize that we need to position ourselves strategically and attract um, the attention of the world because there's so much that we have to offer oftentimes the conversation or the narrative has been oh you know what we have everything these people just come in and they take away all that we have but you ask yourself who is giving them everything that we have? Because they don't come and point a gun at our heads and take everything that we have. There must be a conversation. Negotiations do go on when they show interest. So what we ought to do is to leverage that once again and ensure that it is a win-win situation created for both parties, regardless of who the, which, whichever country or who the individual is, is, we must ensure that the deal is in our favor. And that, for that matter, we should be able to work towards that. So for me, again, it, 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 it was a privilege for us as diplomatic affairs to have been in the office of the foreign affairs minister yeah. uh, or the ministry when the chief diplomat of Ukraine, um, you know, um, His Excellency Kuliba visited um, Ghana um, as part of um, fostering relations with, you know, the West African country, which is Ghana. So I, I know that they sense the need to collaborate or partner Africa. It, was, it wasn't just Africa he visited. He was here for 10 days. So he visited other neighboring countries and of course, you know, outside the, the, the sub-region as well. So this for them is highly strategic. Yeah. It means that they need the African solidarity, mm. especially when they've had to, you know, um, 
fight um, Russia deal with uh, or yeah. deal with the issue yeah. of you know yeah. that the aggression exactly. uh, you know uh, imposed on them right now by Russia. So they have to have the African support. Mind you, Russia is a friend of Africa's, if exactly. I can put it that way. Exactly. Not I mean that way, but Russia and, and Africa there's a there's a, a there's history between you know um, and, there's, there's, yeah. and there's history you yeah. know because when it comes to Russia has always been you know in support of Africa yeah. you know so it, it is only natural that Africans would somehow rally behind Russia even when they feel that you know what um, Russia doesn't have a case here but you know because of solidarity yeah. again we have to just you know yeah. have your back so yeah. having your back you know is, is, is a very nice thing when you have people supporting you now what do they want there is so much economically they have been affected economically the entire world is being affected by what is happening between Russia and Ukraine you know remember the issue of grains for instance yeah. You know, which became a huge, you know, issue for us on the African continent. Um, people didn't really understand the fact that because of the war, or as a result of the war, we were suffering and we didn't have enough grains on, on, on the African continent. We were affected by that produce. And, and, and then you ask yourself, ah, we have, you know, arable lands, a lot of, you know, um, lands here that we could have done that. But it's because of the exchanges between Ghana and, you know, um, Ukraine uh, and also Russia that actually um, yeah. made it you know possible for us to easily you know be able to um, import this produce into the into, into this right. country so for me I think um, Ukraine right now needs the support of Africa economically mm. <laughs> you talk, know talk, talk, talk about that. let's just stay with you before right. I, come to you, Edward. Right. Come to, I mean and I'm gonna ask you this question especially because I've seen your conversation with a South African ambassador uh, I've seen your conversation with the uh, Kenya so exactly and you that's 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 where your point mm. in your estimation do you think that as africans we have strategically positioned ourselves to attract partnership between us and the western world um i i i think yes um i i, I think yes i think yes listen i, I the thing is that i am i am not um, an expert when it comes to this subject but the little i know as an international relations correspondent or a diplomatic correspondent this is where it depends on which context you are looking at this from so let's take it from the you know the broader sense of context hmm. where people can easily relate and appreciate the conversation um no country is is is, is an is, is an island no country is an island you cannot operate individually as a country what you can do is like you rightly stated you ought to position yourself and attract the right people who would come and partner with you partnership in the sense that it becomes mutually beneficial, beneficial. to both parties at the end of the day so i think that yes when you we talk about integration on the african continent that's why we have the institution set up um, in, in charge of our international um, relations or right. affairs you know and on, within the sub-region and even Ghana plays a, a huge role and, a, and, and an important role at the continental level. And even at the global stage, Ghana plays a very important role. It is a developing country, so we need all the partnership we can get. But how we leverage the partnership is the thing we should be talking about. Mm. Because, like I said, no country is an island so you definitely need you know i don't want to say allies because in in, in diplomatic terms uh, you know it means a, a different thing but you need all the you know support partners you can get your development partners must be able to ensure that um you are they are aligning with you when it comes to your your your, your domestic policy mirrors your foreign policy as they say so i think yes you know conversations around that it continues to to to, to improve and it continues to 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 be elevated and i think yes we are a lot of things have gone on behind the scenes that we may not be privy to at the end of the day yeah. but there's this thing i say trickle down diplomacy every decision made at the top must come down to the man on the street are you getting my point yeah. so I think yes with Ukraine Ukraine needs Ghana and Africa you know more than it has ever you know um, needed Ghana and Africa um, they so have um, instituted a, a, an embassy here in the country yeah. you know so you don't have to travel out to so, maybe somewhere else to go and get a visa you mm -hmm. can easily you know access their 
consular services right here in the country, which is also very important because, mind you, we have so many Ghanaian students and African students, you know, schooling, Ukraine. pursuing medicine in, in Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. So in any ways, we are also affected because we have our people in that part of the world. You know, so that's what it is. Well, thank you very much. Well, so this means that they would have to appoint an ambassador here. There is going to be a representative yeah, um, yeah. of Ukraine in, in here, that, championing in the interests of yeah. Ukraine here in the country. Let me come to you, Edwin. Edwin, your take on this subject. Ukraine has more or less been under the shadow of Russia for a very long time. Right. And in fact, our relation with Ukraine began with our establishment of uh, an alliance with the USSR yeah. uh, in, in the days of Kwame Nkrumah because Ukraine is actually a founding member of the USSR. Mm -hmm. You know, they were one of the individual Soviet states yeah. that uh, came together to create that bloc. And at the time, all our um, bilateral relations, you know, treaties, everything that established Ghana and uh, the USSR was more or less inherited by Ukraine, you know, after they split from the USSR. So I see that this is an opportunity for them now to carve out their own relationship mm. with each of the, these uh, potential partners. And um, you see now, I remember a headline, I think it was either the Financial Times or The Economist, mm -hmm. that said that Africa was the next frontier. Uh, but I beg to differ because Africa is the last frontier, right? After Africa, who is next? There's nobody else right. that has to develop in the world. So it's a bit sarcastic when they say that, oh, you are the next. Yeah. When actually, in actual fact, we are the last. So finally, Africa is given the seat that it deserves at the world stage that we've so much deserved for such a long time. Because when it comes to resources, when it comes to politics, mm. you know, even the very idea of... Uh, the European Union and an optimum currency area actually came from here because the OAU had all those plans in place to have an optimum currency. You know, the euro came in, I believe, 1990. But in the 60s, our leaders already had that concept to create a single currency mm. for the region. So yeah. they've actually benefited from our, our political, you know, uh, formation and structure Although, you know, the evolution of that body unfortunately didn't uh, turn out the way we, mm -hmm. our forefathers planned. But they inherited those ideas, they implemented it, and, you know, now we can see how far that the EU has come. And so I think that as we are taking our position, uh, I love what Harriet said about us rather positioning Oh, that, that's the African Union you were talking about. As a continent, yeah. right. you know, not just as a trading bloc, yeah. but yeah. also in terms of our leadership on the continent mm. to dictate the development and the direction of our own affairs. You know, and I think, as Harriet was saying, that as a continent and even as a country, as Ghana, we have to think strategically about how mm. we position ourselves mm. in the world. Because very often, you look at all these Russia-Africa conference, China-Africa mm -hmm. conference, you know, very soon the Korea-Africa conference will be happening. But we are not taking a leadership position at these conferences instead of us being price makers we are price takers even though yeah. these are resources that are on our own continent and they are coming from our, our, our you know our ground mm. um, we end up taking the price that they give us you know and i think that has to change right. dramatically you know if the world has finally accepted that africa is the next frontier to be developed then i think that africa itself needs to take a leading position and directing how that goes. And so Ukraine now, much like the rest of the world, like China, like Russia, like Korea, is no different. They also see that, especially now when you look at the United Nations, Africa's seat is growing, Africa's role is growing. You know, now we have a position at the Security Council, you know, we uh, are also making up the numbers. So they know that strategically, if you need numbers to vote on any particular issue, Africa has the numbers. So, you know, aside from Ghana, they're also opening missions in Rwanda, mm -hmm. in Mozambique, Mauritania, yeah. Botswana, Sudan. So you can see that it's part of a broad approach to, you know, pull Africa close mm -hmm. to them. Um, because for a long time, that gap has been there, you know, because 
they only inherited their relationship right. based on Russia's relationship. Mm. But now they've seen that, you know, we need to carve out our own policies for these countries. We need to develop our own relationship with these countries and be a part of their, their growth. And so it's a welcome development. Mm. And uh, yeah, we're very happy to see this. We hope that as it, you know, grows from being a consulate to a right. full embassy, that this is a full-blown embassy. This is a full-blown embassy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. Right. Yes, eventually. Right. Thank you very much, Edwin. Well, so I'm happy about this. Within a week, yes, if I'm right, uh, American rapper Jaru was in Ghana to initiate the construction of a classroom block. And this partnership is in collaboration with the U.S. non-governmental organization Pencil and Promise. I'm very, very honored to be here, happy to be a part of this groundbreaking of this new six block, six classroom block school here in Nuwaso. I'm so happy to be a part of this. This came about a few, maybe uh, last year sometime when I sat at the Pencils of Promise um, event at the gala and they, they gave me an amazing award, an audacious, the Audacious Award and I'm proud of that, and I'm proud to be out here and to have the audacity to come out here to build a school in the middle of Africa for my people. And I, and I, and I, I know that this is going to be an opportunity that will last for many, many years to come. This is just the beginning of something very special. As I look out into the crowd, I see a lot of beautiful students here from, from, from some of Pencil of Promises, other programs, and it's really, really dope to see them. The kids that just gave those amazing, amazing poems. That's what this is about. That's what Pencils of Promise is about. And for me, education is the pillar of community. Thank you for giving back to society. You acknowledge that you have a social contract with people. And I pray that other performers within Ghana and outside Ghana would emulate what Jaru is doing. Government cannot do it all. I know that most people will expect that everything must be done by government. But government cannot do it all. I'm sure even in the developed countries, he came from a developed country, but he knows that government cannot do it all. And that is why he's here, to give back to society so we can have this crew. To you, Jaru, I just want to let you know that Ghana is home. Our AU, African Union, has actually given people of African descent recognition to the extent that we have North Africa, East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, and East Africa. There's one new region that we have now called the Sith region. And the Sith region is for people like you, people of black descent, who are supposed to be Africans, but they do not live in Africa. And so, Ghana is home. You are part of the Sith region of Africa. See yourself as such. When you go back home, tell the people in the Sith region that we acknowledge your effort. We know you are part of us. This is good. Edwin, let me stay with you. This is good, right? No, it's, it's excellent. Ghana has always been, if you like, the mother of the diaspora. You know, when you talk about the mothership, what is the one country that every black American or black European or descendant of an African anywhere will think about? And it's Ghana. All the way from Marcus Garvey to, you know, people like um, Ja Rule and so on and so forth. Ghana is really the gateway for them. Uh, what ended up, what started out as a case, you know, because Ghana played such an important role in the slave trade. We were the final point of call, the door of no return, was here. They came from all over the continent, and this was the last stop before they were shipped off everywhere, which I believe was a curse. But that curse has been turned into a blessing, hmm. because we went from being the door of no return to being the door of return. And so this is, I think, in, in keeping with the policy of the Beyond the Return initiative, and we need to create more opportunities for these um, celebrities, not just celebrities, everyday African Americans, everyday Africans to be welcomed and to be received. Because I believe that 
Ghana and Accra is one of the best places to do business on the continent of Africa. Uh, according to the Doing Business uh, report, Ghana ranks almost, I think, uh, one of the top countries. Right. I think Mauritania is first, uh, but Ghana is second. So when it comes to registering a business, open a bank account, buying land, all of those kind of you know, things, all those mm -hmm. transactions, Ghana is one of the best places to to do that and you know so we welcome the Jarus of the world to right. come and establish like that. in Ghana. I like that. The Jarus of the world. <laughs> <laughs> like like right, you are the event. Right. No, no, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. But we nearly had the opportunity to interact with Jaru. Okay. Um, you know, a day to his exit right. back to the United States of America. Uh, unfortunately, the timing was, um, you know, too short for oh. us to put ourselves together and, and, and do this. Otherwise, we would have the conversation would have been, you know, I sat with Jaru. You know, I know. The feeling, I right? know. I sat with Jaru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah. this definitely. Yeah. I promise you, this is going to happen. It this should. is going to it happen. It should. It should. Listen, Ivan. I think um, Edwin has said it all. When it comes to economic diplomacy, I say that it is not just an activity of government officials. Economic diplomacy, um, diplomacy starts with the people. That is why it is important that you build people-to-people -people relations. Oh. So the people can comfortably do business together. How did Jaru actually discover Ghana? This is his first time in Ghana, I believe, and it started with an initiative of this kind, which is highly commendable, because oftentimes people would come and survey or recce the space before anything, but I don't know how long such a conversation might have gone on for, for him to have taken this huge, you know, um, step. I think he's been in Ghana, Ghana before. He's been in Ghana yeah, before, I right? Think so I think he started okay, so from that there. Yeah. So he he's already... Yeah. a performance. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So it means that he already has a relationship. He's had an encounter yeah. with the motherland, as they call it. You yeah. know, most diasporans love to the refer motherland. to Ghana well, as the motherland. The motherland, you know? the motherland. <laughs> yeah. And they say that with a lot of pride. And, yeah. and, and, and I, I, I share I that pride. You know, yeah. I, I love it. And I think we we need more of such visits. Yeah. This is an avenue for foreign direct investments into our country as well. Exactly. And that's why I said that this goes beyond just the government to government exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, people to people um, exchanges also matters. Uh, you know, it matters as, 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 as much as the government to government exchanges. So um, when I hear stories like this, I take so much joy in them. The excitement and then the future, you know, can only be better. And we want to see more. Like you said, the Jarus, you know, can come into our motherland and help with such initiatives. They find a lot of fulfillment in doing things like this. For them, when they say, I want to give back. And it's not just Jaru. We've seen the Boris Kujo, yeah. Busuma, yeah. Um, recently. Kendrick Lamar has been in you know, Ghana. Exactly. Yeah. So all of them yeah. are taking interest. But this is on the back. Don't forget, this is on the back of the initiative um, you know, um, uh, which was launched by the President yeah. of the Republic of Ghana, the Year of Return Initiative, like Edwin rightly mentioned, which has paved way for the whole world now to hear about Ghana. Right. And want to experience or have an encounter with our country. So um, this is like what we should be seeing more. Without such initia initiatives, it means that government's role is to create an enabling environment for us to function, for the private sector to function. Mind you, this wasn't a government um, initiative. This is an NGO yeah. which initiated this visit. Pencil of promise. Pencil of promise. We will go and look for them because I think we need to see more of such interventions when right. it comes to the development of our country. So for me, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. And we commend, you know, Jaru for coming to, you know, you know, append his signature on, on, on our beautiful country. And um, it, it's good. I'm excited. So we yeah. need to, it means the government's work is to create that enabling environment for the um, um, private sector to, to, to function. They can draw such people, you know, so the policy. And for me, uh, I just I hope that the creative art industry also takes advantage of some of uh, the comments of these, you know, high profile personality right, right. to build the whole, you know, industry. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very yeah. important. I think, I think just to add, our uh, tourism has always been uh, based on cultural tourism. Yeah. Like I said, we can't compete with Kenya when it comes to wildlife. Yeah. But I always say that people go to Kenya mm -hmm. for the animals. People come to Ghana for the people. Yeah. 
That's a fact. Hospitality they can't compete with us yeah. when it comes to the hospitality, when it comes to just how welcoming that we are. You may have the lions and all that, <laughs> but if you want to hang out with cool people, yeah. you're not we going the into coolest. the wildlife. You're yeah, coming yeah, to yeah, Accra. Coolest, eh? Right? In, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ever since the days of the... Pana, Pana Fest and yeah. Emancipation Festival right. and you know that has been the idea yeah. is people come here they go to our traditional festivals yeah. they go to the National Theatre the Chaliwate the Chaliwate the you know, it's our culture these, that is what yeah. we are selling right thank you very much so at this point we'll go for a quick commercial break once we return we'll talk about a grand diplomatic honors event stay with us Right, many thanks for still staying with us. This is Diplomatic Affairs TV show. We're live on Facebook and, of course, on YouTube. I still have my guest here with me, Harriet Nate, who is the founder and CEO of the Diplomatic Honors. And, of course, Edwin Ota, who is also the lead sponsor, you know, man behind the Diplomatic Honors event. Now we're going to be talking about the Diplomatic Honors event, which was inaugurated, um, I mean, in the week, yes, uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It was a breathtaking event. I was personally there. I witnessed how it panned out. Over the years, the kind of work that you have done, um, the first day I saw that you had this TV program where you educate um, Ghanaians on the work of um, our diplomats and Ghana's diplomacy um, generally, I, I thought that that was a good idea. And um, I say that because um, people would usually associate the work that we do with um, having cocktails and um, drinking champagne and all of that um, without them knowing that there's a lot of real work that, that we do um, as diplomats, as we do as a ministry, and this goes for every diplomat around the world. Honorable Shirley Ayoko Boche further disclosed some challenges diplomats face in the line of discharging their duties. She stressed that, apart from what they seek to achieve, there is a need to be careful in navigating through their work. And so, the work is a difficult one because it apart from what we seek to achieve um, there's always also the need to be careful in navigating uh, through your work because one false move and um, it has a direct bearing um, on the country one positive move will also impact positively on the country and so our diplomats do a great job. I believe so. This ministry does a lot of good work. And um, through our missions also, we are representing Ghana as we should. And um, sometimes when there are complaints, I, I say that yes. But overall, we are doing a very good job. Such an initiative is very important, especially in these times. We have all seen and continue to see what is happening in the world um, as the world navigates all the complexities when it comes to um, relations between countries um, bilaterally and also at the multilateral level. I haven't been in this industry or this space um, broadcasting diplomatic affairs every Saturday or on a weekly basis where we educate and inform the general public on the activities of um, the foreign missions here in our country and also about Ghana's foreign um, policy and what we also do in other jurisdictions. It was only natural that um, after seven years, we introduce a platform um, like this one that projects the work of Ghana's foreign service officers or diplomats and also um, our relationship with the world. So in a nutshell, Ghana's um, diplomatic engagements with the rest of the world. It is important to start with Harriet, especially because she conceived the idea for the Diplomatic Honours event. Harriet, mm -hmm. talk to me. How did this whole idea come about, Diplomatic Honours? How did you start <laughs> this? How did you birth this idea? Mm. Wow. How did we birth this idea? 
I mean, we started Diplomatic Affairs TV somewhere, I think, in the year 2018. I wouldn't believe this is our sixth year or seventh year. And um, it's a very beautiful story to tell. You know, whenever I close my eyes and oh. I, I, I tell the story, it, it, it's a very good feeling, um, knowing that we've had to navigate quite a lot to get to where we are today. Right. But this wasn't done um, all by ourselves. We've always have been blessed and lucky to have the right people holding our hands through this journey. And it's one thing I, I, I can't really um, not talk about when I talk about yeah. this story. Yeah. Diplomatic Affairs, um, being in the newsrooms of Metro Television, you know, years back, I have always asked myself, why don't we have a platform that focuses on diplomatic exchanges and international relations, Ghana's foreign policy and, you know, the diaspora and all of these subjects, you know, um, a big umbrella that gives it that spotlight. We've never had anything like that. Right. You know, in the newsroom set, set up, we've always had the political department, you have the health yes. department, the so some the business department, sports, sports yeah. you know. So these are the usual um, yeah. topical areas that are given all the attention. But really, before this, how many people knew about diplomacy or even diplomats, you know, the, the, the actors of the profession? How many people knew about them? Nobody, not a lot of people. The only people I can say for a fact that knew about this area would be the, you know, the, the ambassadors, the, yeah. the family, those who are coming from that home. So they are very much used to this profession. Um, growing up, what, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Um, you know, everybody says I want to be a pilot growing up. So you wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> I'm sure you would have excelled. I'd be yeah, a pilot. Well, so, well, yeah, well, I'm sure you would have excelled. Video, yeah. I'm sure you would have excelled. And, and you, well, what, well, did you, what did you want to be when you were growing up, Edwin? I believe initially I wanted to be a lawyer. A lawyer. Yeah. Well, I believe you would have excelled at it as yeah. well. But you see, growing up, I've always wanted to be an air hostess, which is not far from. So I would exactly. have been your, your <laughs> I would have been, you know, part of your crew actually. Yeah. But you see, because I had never heard anything about this profession, so I took it upon myself after my first encounter with the diplomatic community. I was just assigned to this job. I found myself there, and I was totally lost. And I was like, "What happens here?" All I could see, um, I was just people holding glasses you know and then drinking the champagne breaking as the minister said that. breaking yes. bread in an elegant manner yeah. you know and yeah. and yet business was going on yet business was going on it was a subtle way of doing business mm. the environment is created and it welcomes um, ideas from different sectors so these are not just um, spaces for diplomats it's a space where anybody at all a cut across can find themselves in I thought you know what let's start by educating and informing the general public on what happens here and naturally the profession has always been very conservative you pay and want some you know and you know a lot done behind the curtains they don't want because I now understand why it is so because it's a very sensitive area not everybody can handle the sensitivity that comes with this profession and a lot of things they would rather see is translate in the lives of the people and not come and, and share with them the technicalities involved. So um, in a nutshell, we have been doing this um, for the past six years. Uh -huh. um, and uh, we thought, um, you know, it's, it's only natural that we moved, we migrated as part of growth, you know, expanding our wings and, and getting to the top. Let's stretch ourselves a bit further um, by doing something that, you know, we feel has never been done before, but also to promote the cause of humanity and serve as a watchdog and that can also hold people accountable let them know that there's somebody in this space watching service mm. what you've been planted there to do are you doing it because mm. at the end of the day when you go out of your way to do it regardless of the resources whether you were given enough resources or not we would want to feel the impact we would want to appreciate the fact that you went out of your way to help you know, and, and, and to promote yeah. the country and contribute somehow to the growth of our country. Yeah. So hence the, the, the initiative or the concept, <coughs> Diplomatic Honours, um, um, to celebrate foreign service officers, diplomats. There are foreign service officers, 
you know, who are not diplomats, okay. but they serve in the foreign service, mm. you know. And we have the diplomats. They could be a career diplomat or a political diplomat, you know. So, um, and then the NGOs, like this Pencil for Promise, you know, um, organization, like for international instance. Civil and international civil servants. Then we have the international civil servants, yeah. of course, Ghanaians who have served yeah. in the, you know, yeah. outside, yeah. occupying international positions Sessions, as yeah. well. Yeah. And then talking about all of these people, I, I think we ought to continue um, their legacies. How do we do that? By continuing to speak what they have done, share their impacts that they have made. So even when they are gone, the likes of Kofi Annan, you know, people, everybody, almost everyone knows about Kofi Annan. But how many people know about the people who have also done almost exactly. or the same thing, impacted the world and contributed to our great country in that through diplomacy right. and international relations, but have not been recognized. Right. So we want to just push the conversation and also get the, the general public right. to appreciate um, what happens in this area right. and serve as a watchdog. Right. For me as a journalist, right. that's the most important thing. Yes, is to let you know that um, big brother or big sister somewhere is watching. Yeah. If you do a good job, your deeds must definitely exactly. be rewarded, must not go unrecognized. Right. Ivan, right. this is for Ghana. This is for Africa. This is for the world. Right. Edwin, let me bring you in. I mean, Harriet has uh, <clears throat> eloquently you know, exposed uh, the importance, the need, the objectives, mm -hmm. mission and vision of this very project. Now, let's talk about the theme. Um, leveraging diplomacy for industrialization, sustainable development, peace and security. Throw more light on that. Yeah, I think Ghana has a unique role in, in diplomacy on the continent. Um, may I even say we are the Switzerland of, of the sub-region and of the continent. Why do I say that? Usually when you have um, uh, conflicts, you have anything that needs resolution, it looks like the, the region somehow leans towards Ghana to not necessarily for our military might mm -hmm. because Nigeria is the army for the continent, just like the way America is the army for you know the the world yeah. uh, so we don't have that military might but what we do have is the diplomatic prowess right. and you know the relationships that we've forged over the years allows us to be able to get into certain rooms be able to push a certain agenda uh, and so because of that unique position that Ghana has I think that this is a, a an evolution to say that we are cementing our role in the region right. as the foremost diplomats because across the world, the first intellectual black person that a lot of countries signed any agreement with was a Ghanaian. You have Kwesin Saki in the 70s. He was on the, uh, the United Nations Security Council in the 70s. You have A.L. Edu. He was the uh, secretary to the Commonwealth Secretariat. Right? So these people, if you like, somebody like Kofi Annan is standing on their shoulders. Because there were Ghanaians that went ahead and paved ways yeah. in the international scene for someone like Kofi Annan to even get the door to open for him and to be able to take a position, mm -hmm. such a position as the Secretary General. You know, it, he didn't come out of nowhere. Right. You know, it came out of long years of service. It came out of, you know, a lot of work of, you know, our, our diplomats. And I think that it's only right yeah. that we you know, building on that legacy, host such an event to honor those people. Right. And so that's why we are, we are doing the diplomatic. Right. I'll come back to you for you to talk about the sponsorship part of the whole project. Absolutely. But let me come back to you, Harriet. Um, I see a, a long list of partners, which of course I know that um, the ministry is the major partner. That's, that's a big one for me. That's a big one for me. But throw more light on these Indeed. partnership and their Indeed. significance. Indeed. It is a big one for all of us. Yeah. Um, and it adds a lot of prestige to what we're doing. And it also goes a long way to show that this is a very credible um, exactly. platform that we have created, not for ourselves, but for the people who deserve to be um, on it on the night of the event. So we have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration co-hosting the events with us oh, they are 
guiding us through all the technicalities because like I mentioned earlier there's a very slippery area and mm -hmm. you need the right guidance to be able to navigate your way um, through we also have the economic community of West African states which is ECOWAS you know um, that's um, for the region as well and they are also there helping us through we have the um, the African continental free okay, trade yeah. secretariat yeah. which is hosted here in Accra um, no that's the and then we have the SDGs yeah. advisory unit office yeah. of the president that's the sustainable development goals. goals you know they okay. advise the, the president on our sustainable goals agenda and we also have um, the diaspora yeah, yeah. the um, um, the diaspora you yeah. know affairs um, units um, office of the president um, this is to say that the president has you know endorsed um, this project as well so we are working with quite a number of organizations um, yeah. trade and we cannot talk about diplomacy without talking yeah. about um, arts and culture arts tourism style. arts yeah. and culture we cannot say we are doing this without talking about all the elements that come to play when it comes to what yeah. we want to achieve. Yeah. So we are highly supported. Yeah. We have a huge cushion, you yeah. know, cushioning yeah. us through Br this. Briefly talk about the selection process and who qualifies to be a nominee to receive an award, briefly. Uh, I don't want to talk about that now. Okay. I don't want to talk about that now because that's not something we can quickly, okay. we can rush okay. with. Okay. I would rather want to take my time. And we are still, All right. this is the fa the phase where we are right now with what we're doing. This is mm. the most difficult mm. part of the job, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it, 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 it needs a lot of research. Mm. It needs a lot of information and fact for you to say that I'm awarding or I'm, you know, honoring Ivan Vance because of what he's done. But we have we have right. categories that we are going to go by and we have a committee set up um, that is made up of highly prominent credible mm. distinguished individuals um, from all sectors and um, they are helping us to come up with the best right. that actually deserves to be so at the right time we would have access to the full category list Definitely. and of course access to who becomes right who takes what home and right. all that right but we had the launch at the foreign affairs ministry that was big. and that, that was, was grand you know yes. the, the yes. ministry yes. endorsing it, it it was huge Right. Edwin, now let's talk about sponsorship. If anybody wants to sponsor the Diplomatic Honest event, what do they have to do? What are we doing? Are we securing tables? Talk to us about it. Right. So what we can say at the moment is that this is a, a celebration of diplomatic excellence. And everybody that is going to walk away with some sort of recognition or award is somebody that has served either Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, the capacity of uh, a diplomat, or they have served... Africa, as she just said, and the world. or they have served the world yeah. in some shape or form using their, their skills as a diplomat to bring about peace, bring about security, uh, to look for trade opportunities, and to help improve the lives of uh, the constituents of the people that they yeah. represent. Because yeah. at the end of the day, ambassadors are there as representatives. Yeah. An ambassador is there to represent the interest of the country that they are from right. or the institution that they represent. So, so we need the all the money we can get. That yeah, that's the part I'm waiting for you to speak on. Exactly. We need <laughs> all the money we can get. <laughs> these, these sponsors, and I want to speak to anybody that's interested. Yes. If you want to be able to uh, join hands with the diplomatic community, join hands with uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, also to have your company being recognized, being seen as uh, the focal point uh, for whatever service that you provide. Yeah. Bear in mind that this is an exclusive group of people. Uh, so the kind of sponsors that we are looking for really have to, to bring their A game because yeah. to be able to get a table literally at that yeah. dinner, yeah. Uh, I believe that it has to be somebody that is contributing something. But I think I Can we have a number? Do you have a number? Let's put the number out there. Yeah. Is so, that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So sure, we have sure, another sure, opportunity sure, sure, sure. to give yeah. you the details. Yeah. But now let's just put the numbers yeah. out there. Yeah, so we have table packages. We have sponsorship packages. Let's put the numbers out and, there. Uh, right. If you want to reach out, the number to call is 050 277 8335. Yeah. And you put again. the number on the screen, of right? Course, we'll 050 277 8335. We're looking for logistics sponsors, we're looking for financial sponsors, we're looking for media Any sponsors. Any website to put out there? Yes. Uh, I believe the website is diplomatic honors.gatv.com. Mm -hmm. 
gh.com. Right. So I'm sure that will be on the yes, screen. Definitely. And, uh, right. 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 You Thank you so much, Eden, for your time. Thank you so much, Harit Nate. It was good filling your seat or filling your shoes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed myself. Trust me. You did me. a great job. You have not really been doing this for years. So, you know. But, I mean, yeah. thank you so much for your time on this show. This is where we draw down the curtains. This has been Diplomatic Affairs TV show. I'll catch you same time next week. Say that's bye. Bye. All right, bye.